Hello, I'm Dr. Amir Khan. I'm an NHS doctor, and today I'm going to show you how to collect your COVID-19 virus test sample. While rapid lateral flow tests are for people with no symptoms of COVID-19, PCR tests are usually for those who do have symptoms, however mild these may be. That means you'll probably have at least one of the following. A high temperature, a new continuous cough, a loss or change to your sense of smell or taste. If you have problems with your hands or vision, you may need someone to assist you with the swabbing and testing process. Step 1. Check the collection times at a priority post box near you. It's important that you post your completed test kit on the same day you take the test and no later than one hour before the last collection time. Before you take your sample, check the collection times at your nearest Royal Mail Priority Post Box. To do this, you'll need to find a Priority Post Box, download and use the Royal Mail app, or go online and visit www.royalmail.com forward slash services near you. If you cannot get to a Priority Post Box, call the contact centre on 119 for guidance on when to take your test and how to book a courier collection. Step 2. Register the test kit online. You must register the test kit online before you take the test, otherwise you will not be sent the results. Some test kits have been pre-registered. Check your instruction booklet to see if you need to register your test kit. If your test kit has been pre-registered, it will tell you on the front of the booklet and on a label on your test kit package. If you have received a registered kit, do not let anyone else take your test because their result will be registered to you. Keep this booklet as a record of your test. If you're testing more than one person in your household, you must register each person's test kit. Make sure that you register the right kit to the right person. To register your test kit, you'll need to go online. You'll need three things to help you register. Your 10-digit order ID. You'll find this in your home test order confirmation email. Your 13-character Royal Mail barcode. On the prepaid return label, you only need to input the numbers and letters, not the hashtag symbol. And your 11-character test kit barcode. Check the same barcode appears on your instruction booklet, plastic tube, leak-proof bag and return box. Step 3. Doing a test on yourself or someone else. Do not eat or drink for at least 30 minutes before doing the test to reduce the risk of spoiling the test. Try to remain calm and confident as you go through the process. Step 4. Set up the test. Clear, clean and dry a surface such as a table to be used as the testing area. You will need your test kit, tissues, surface cleaner, hand sanitizer, or soap and warm water. Wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds or use a hand sanitizer before handling the test kit. This is essential and avoids contaminating the test kit. If more than one test is being done, clean the surface and re-wash your hands between each test. Step 5. Check the test kit contents. Make sure your kit contains the following items. A swab inside a sealed wrapper, a plastic tube containing a small amount of liquid, a white absorbent pad, a leak-proof bag, a return box with a prepaid Royal Mail return label, and a security seal for the return box. Check there is an 11 character barcode on the instruction booklet, plastic tube, leak-proof bag and return box. Make sure the barcode is the same on all these items. Check the use by date and make sure the test is still in date. The use by date will be displayed on the label on your test kit package. If anything is broken or missing, or if any barcodes do not match, or if the test kit use by date on the test kit label has expired, do not use the kit. Contact the call centre on 119 and order a new test. Calls to 119 are free from mobiles and landlines and lines are open every day from 7am to 11pm. Step 6. 
take a nose and throat swab. Do not bend the swab or use excessive force or pressure or bending when collecting the swab sample, as this may result in accidental breakage of the swab stick. Try not to touch your tongue, teeth, cheeks, gums or any other surfaces with the swab's fabric tip as this may spoil your sample. If this does happen, complete and return the test anyway. Look inside your mouth and find your tonsils on each side at the back of your throat or where they would have been if you do not have them. This is where you'll be taking your swab sample. Next, gently blow your nose into a tissue so excess mucus does not spoil the test, then throw the tissue away in a bin. Immediately before handling the test kit, wash your hands thoroughly again for 20 seconds using soap and warm water or hand sanitizer. If you're testing a child or someone else, make sure they also wash their hands. Open the swab wrapper at the stick end rather than the fabric tip end and gently take out the swab. It's important you do not touch the fabric end of the swab. It must not touch anything else, otherwise your sample may be spoilt. The swab will be used for both tonsils and nose. Holding the swab between your fingers, open your mouth wide and tilt your head back. Gently rub the swab's fabric tip over both tonsils or where they would have been. Do this with good contact four times on each side. When the swab touches your tonsil, it might make you gag or cause some discomfort, but don't worry, this is normal. Carefully remove the swab. If you're testing someone else, it'll help if you get them to say ah loudly while you take the throat sample. If you're testing a child or you cannot swab the throat for any reason, swab both nostrils instead using the instructions in the next step. Although bear in mind that the result may not be as accurate this way. Next, gently put the same end of the swab into your nostril until you feel some resistance. This is usually around the two and a half centimeter mark. Roll the swab firmly around the inside of your nostril, making 10 complete circles. Then slowly take it out. If you do not complete a throat swab, remember to swab both of your nostrils. If you have a nose piercing in one of your nostrils, you'll need to use the other one. If pierced on both sides, remove the piercing on the one side before swabbing. If you have had a nosebleed within the last 24 hours, swab the other nostril. Or wait 24 hours before taking the test. After you've done this, unscrew the lid from the plastic tube but make sure you keep it upright so the liquid stays inside. Remember not to let the fabric tip touch anything. Put the swab inside the tube and the fabric tip facing down. Snap off the stick end of the swab so that it fits inside the tube without bending. Then screw the lid back on the tube. It's important to make sure the lid is screwed back on securely so that the liquid doesn't leak out. Step 7. Package up the test kit. Before packaging up the test kit to return it, wash your hands thoroughly with soap and warm water for 20 seconds or use hand sanitizer. Make sure the barcodes on the plastic tube and leak proof bag match. Put the absorbent pad into the leak proof bag and then put the tube in the same bag next to the absorbent pad. Let some air out of the leak proof bag and then seal it using its adhesive seal. It's important to make sure the leak proof bag is sealed properly. Next, you'll need to assemble the return box. Peel the backing off the security seal and apply it so it keeps the box lid closed. Take a picture or make a note of the barcode on your Royal Mail return label so you can track the delivery. You're now ready to post your test kit. You can dispose of any remaining test kit parts in your household waste. Step 8. Post the completed test kit. It's important that you post the completed test kit on the same day you take the test and no later than one hour before the last collection time. Weekend and bank holiday times may differ from weekdays. You should only use a postbox that shows the Royal Mail Priority Postbox label, as well as one of these NHS logos. Some Priority Postboxes also have a Sunday collection. If they do, they'll show one of these labels. If you take your test on a Sunday and you cannot get it to a priority postbox with a Sunday collection, call 119 for guidance or to book a courier. Please do not go into a post office with your test kit.
If symptomatic, avoid contact with others, wear a face covering and do not take public transport. You can walk, cycle or drive to your nearest priority post box to post your test kit or someone can post it for you. You can track your delivery using your Royal Mail return label barcode at www.royalmail.com forward slash track and trace. You should get your test results by email and text within two days of returning the kit. However, due to the volume of tests, it may take longer. If you have not had a result back within five days, call the contact centre on 119. While you're waiting for your results, please follow the government guidelines to help ensure you do not spread the virus. I want to say a massive thank you for completing the testing kit and for following the instructions. I know it's a bit fiddly, but hopefully it wasn't too uncomfortable. Now that you've seen the instructions in full, you can go back and stop at each step should you wish to. We all have a role to play in this pandemic and thank you for playing your part. If you need help with any of the steps, you can call the contact centre on 119. You can also use the free Be My Eyes app to get help from trained NHS test and trace staff. Download the app, go to specialised help and select NHS test and trace in the personal health category.